How do you choose between doing a PsyD or a PhD in clinical psychology? Learn the six key questions that you need to ask yourself today on Navigating Academia. What's up everybody? My name is Dr. Jay Phoenix Singh and I want to warmly welcome you to this episode of Navigating Academia, your leading source for guidance on how to advance your career in academia. As always, I appreciate the love, so please do take a moment right now to like this video. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and hit that bell to be able to make sure that you get notifications every time we post new original content, which is every Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning Eastern Time in the US. Now please do also share it on your social media feeds, especially if you think your friends, your colleagues, and your students may enjoy it, and also follow us on these social media accounts. So let's jump right in. I can't tell you the number of people who have contacted me via this channel, which has been such a blessing. I really do love hearing from you. Uh, to be able to ask what I think about PsyDs and PhDs and which one is preferable. Now, I wish that there was some across the board statement that I could make here, but it really is one that deserves a, a proper discussion and a lot of nuance. And so because of that, I wanted to make you this video to be able to give you the six questions that I deeply believe you need to ask yourself that is going to help guide you in your own personal decision making as of which of these two degrees to be able to pursue. So let's jump right in. Question one to ask yourself is do you want to spend most of your time as a clinician or as a researcher? Now trust me, anybody who's going to go into either of these programs, especially clinical PhDs, they're going to say, well, I'm going to do both. Yeah, I'm going to be a clinician, but I'm also going to do some research I'm going to publish on the side. People inside these say, you know, I'm really principally interested in clinical practice, but you know, I wouldn't be averse on the side to publishing some papers, publishing some books, maybe some treatment manuals, maybe some, you know, psychological assessment instruments, etc. I can just tell you from experience that is so immensely rare that you should just assume that it's it's not going to happen, especially when it comes to making this decision. You really need to decide whether you want to spend the overwhelming preponderance of your time as a clinician or as a researcher, and there is nothing wrong with pursuing either of those. I can tell you that I was the guy who was, you know, clinical work, 100%, had no interest in being a research, ended up getting it into a research program, and became a researcher, and have done very well for myself, and very happy, and have found different ways to be able to explore my clinical background, including getting a doctorate in clinical psychology after my first doctorate from Oxford. So it's one of these situations where uh, it's not one size fits all, but it is a good idea to really consider what you're looking for. Do you want to spend your time deeply ensconced in statistics and deeply ensconced in learning the nuances of writing peer-reviewed academic articles? That is a whole world into itself. Uh, and it is very time consuming and it has very little to do with clinical practice, even though clinicians should still know about stats to be able to help them be better able to read the research literature, right? Uh, so this is really the, the first question that I want you to ask yourself. If you fall more on the research side, strongly consider the clinical PhD. If however, you're really driven to be a clinician, especially a private practitioner, you need to go this ID route. The second question to ask yourself is, do you want to go to what would be considered by most people to be a quote unquote, big name university? Uh, these almost always only offer PhDs, especially any programs that may have any notoriety within psychology. Those are clinical psychology programs. Uh, sorry, clinical uh, psychology PhD programs. They are not PsyD programs. Uh, and it's not that there's anything wrong with PsyD programs, they're just a much newer degree. And because of that, a lot of the times you end up finding these uh, these uh, smaller privatized organizations, these institutes, 
Um, they're the ones who are actually, you know, these professional schools, some call them, they're the ones who are actually providing these PsyD programs. Now, there are a few that do offer them, ones like Rucker, as of this filming in late 2019, Rucker's, uh, Pepperdine, uh, Hofstra, a few big name universities that do offer those PsyD degrees. And I do strongly recommend going for those, provided there are faculty members there who are kind of the right faculty members in your sub area forensic psychology, child psychology, whatever it is, right? So long as it has that subspecialty in the right faculty, I would strongly recommend it, especially if it's a bigger name university, okay? So if you wanna to go to a big name university though classically, then you're going to really wanna consider doing a clinical PhD. The third question to ask yourself is, down the line on your personal life runway, do you at any point want to be a professor at a big name school, at a big name university? These are usually going to be what we call R1 university, Research One universities. Uh, and this has to do with a lot of things, especially has to do with grants. Uh, and the way that you get a grant is through a very arduous process, the grant development process. You go to an organization like a National Institute of Mental Health. Uh, I mean, there's so many of these different grant funding organizations, but you need one of them uh, to be able to approve your work and give you funding, and it's usually a competitive process that can be very cutthroat. The likelihood of getting it is very low, it's very bureaucratic, it's very strategic. It's frankly a pain in the butt. Um, but you usually end up making more money by going to one of these places, even though the money is soft money, meaning that it doesn't come from student tuition, it comes from the grants themselves. So you really eat what you kill, which is really important to know. But then you're going to be at the Harvards, like the really big, the UNCs, the big name universities. That's where you're going to end up finding yourself. And if you want to be a professor at one of those big name universities, you better get used to that process. And I would argue at this time, at least, that PsyD programs will not prepare you for that. In fact, I am only familiar with one PsyD who is actually, you know, very active in that world right now in a successful fashion. Does that mean that you can't do it? Of course it does. Right, you can break the mold and I think that would be a wonderful thing. My job though is to be able to give you the evidence based as it exists right now. And that's where we are. The next question to ask yourself is, do you want to work with some of the quote unquote big names in psychology? Uh, virtually always these big name people are at R1 universities, maybe R2, but really mostly at R1 universities, the big name people in the field. These are like the Aaron Becks and the Phil Zimbardos and the Albert Banderers and these sorts of guys. The legends, the OGs in the field, uh, they're at R1 universities in clinical PhD programs, especially if you're one of them as one of your supervisors. That's where you would want to be. Now, in some cases, there are some PsyD programs that are linked up, either at big name universities like Pepperdine that we talked about, or they're linked up um, with actual clinical PhD programs, uh, such that you can kind of have almost cross-pollination of the same faculty. That could be something that you may want to look into. But generally speaking, right across the board, across all nine, right now at the time of this film, it's 96 American Psychological Association accredited PsyD programs. Across the overwhelming preponderance of them, they are not at big name universities. And that's very important to know. You may want to take a look at faculty, maybe somebody's adjuncting who's a big name that semester at a university. But generally speaking, if you have to make that nice little cross-section determination, you want to go with a clinical psych PhD if that's something that's important to you. The next question to ask yourself is, do you want to win awards from associations? Academic awards are really the coin of the realm or one of the coins of the realm in terms of moving up in academia to self-branding, to making yourself a real asset to other individuals, and to essentially just uh, you know putting yourself on the map. What can I say, right? Uh, and a lot of associations, uh, they provide an early career professional award, a lifetime achievement award, and travel grants, everything in between micro grants in some cases, cases, uh, everything in between, which is a pretty sweet deal. Uh, and so essentially, uh, the thing to mention here is that if you do want to win an award from an association, 
I have, I mean, to, to be perfectly honest with you, I have never heard of a PsyD winning that award, winning like a large scale award, unless it was an award that specifically had to do with clinical practice. Because most of these degrees are related to research or policy, etc. cetera. Uh, does it mean it can't happen? Of course not. Uh, am I sure that there are many examples that you could bring to me that would be the contrary? Probably. Uh, but in the aggregate, from my anecdotal experience, I have not seen that. Uh, and hence, my personal recommendation would be to pursue a clinical psychology PhD if academic awards is something that's very important to you. Now, do you get any money with the academic awards? Rarely. Uh, maybe you'll get a nice plaque or something like that. Um, and maybe that means something to you. And there's nothing wrong with that meaning a lot to you, right? People have different professional goals. But if that is one of your professional goals, something to keep in mind. And finally is, do you care about the perception of your doctorate by your colleagues. Obviously, especially if you're a practitioner, you should really only care about what your patients think, right? That's the law of the land. But if you really care about what your colleagues think and you got a whole bunch of PhD colleagues, it's likely that they're going to look down on the side deed. That's just the state right now, end of 2019, hopefully in a few years, it won't be the case anymore. But right now, regardless of what anybody tells you, it's true. Uh, and so because of that, if you really care about that, you should know about it. But keep in mind that even if you're a clinical psychology PhD, you're gonna have MD psychiatrists looking down on you as well. This is a very hierarchical field unnecessarily. The psychiatrists look down at the psychologists, the PhD psychologists look down at the PsyD, just generally, look down at the PsyDs. The PsyDs probably also look down at folks like counselors and social workers, and then beneath that are folks like behavioral coaches and these sorts of guys. So it's one of these things that's very unnecessarily hierarchical. At the end of the day, you really shouldn't care, but we're human beings and we care. If that's something that really means a lot to you, sure, you should take that into consideration, okay? now. Both times you're gonna be called doctor to some people that's very important. I can tell you personally, barely anybody will call you doctor. Uh, in fact, it'll make you a little uncomfortable a while. People, after, for after a while, people calling you doctor and such, because you realize that everybody's doctor is just a very generic person. Uh, but if that's something that's important to you, at least for the side and the PhD, you're getting that status in both. So those are my recommendations for you of questions to ask yourself before taking the plunge. All right, everybody, thank you so much for stopping by. If you have any recommendations for future episodes of Navigating Academia, we'd obviously love to hear from you in the comments below. Frankly, any comment you leave, just a little good job, anything like that, really helps the algorithm, as it does if you like and share the video. So please do help us out, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, in addition to that, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one career mentoring with me, specifically to be able to walk through, help you make this really big life determination, let's hop on the phone and chat about a strategy that we can use together to be able to get you into the right place and then maximize the likelihood to get you the opportunity to actually go to your dream school. And you can do that via the website below. All right, everybody, signing off for today. Thank you so much again for stopping by. And remember to get out there, take chances, and be your best self. Thank you so much for stopping by, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here as always. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more in this series on navigating academia, please click on one of these links over here to be able to view more original content. I hope to see you there.